It's so easy in film to put the conflict on how hard it is to be queer or gay or the coming out process or the I'm dating someone but they're not out kind of thing and I was like let's take the conflict and put it in the sport yeah. because that's where there's conflict already and let's just let the characters be who they are. Hi, I'm Peter Kinnett, and I'm here with Debra Jacobs and D.W. Watterson, two of the many incredible people behind the new film, Backspot. So first of all, I need to celebrate, Debra, you're the first ever returning guest to the show, so. What, actually? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, and, thanks for having me another time. And you brought such incredible company, D.W., welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. So the two of you have collaborated on this incredible new film, Backspot, which, among other things, is sort of delves deep into the, the intensity of competitive cheerleading. I'm just curious before we get into the film, like what your histories with cheerleading were before this project? Yeah, I mean, I, funny enough, everybody's like, oh, you were probably a cheerleader. I'm like, I wore a cheerleading uniform while I DJed and played drums on stage in nightclubs, which is such a <laughs> such a odd way and nobody expects that that's kind of my in. But I don't know, there's something about wearing that uniform and, and what it does to... I don't know, the audience, you know, in, in pop culture, in queerness, in queer cinema, there's such like a synergy uh, uh, with cheerleading, so. I wasn't a cheerleader myself, but like we actually created, uh, well, you had approached me with the idea uh, on the way to TIFF five years ago in 2017 because you wanted to do a proof of concept and do a, a cheerleading movie that's a little grittier and and you were like you should be in it and and I was like that's actually really funny because I used to be a competitive gymnast and was provincial champion okay. for uh, a couple of years and so there's a lot of overlap between gymnastics and cheerleading a lot of cheerleaders start as gymnasts because of the tumbling aspects and and the jumps but I had to start from like ground zero when it came to cheering when it came to stunting and back spotting and, and all of that like throwing people in the air and doing pyramids that was uh, that was a new challenge and that we had to figure out and prepare for in in getting ready for for filming I mean that background does make sense though for this like I learned a lot about cheerleading from this movie I mean I feel like I had a bit of a blind spot before back spot um, but <laughs> well I just did that now actually. Uh, wow. uh, but like this isn't bring it on this is no. uh, you know it's been favorably compared to you know whiplash or black swan but I think it also is very much its own unique thing DW this is your first feature film yes Do you want to talk about like what you were trying to express with this story yeah, I mean, I really just wanted to show the grittiness uh, of cheerleading and the toll the sport takes on their bodies, um, but as, as well like on mental health. You know, we always think about sport as so physical, physical activity, but it also has like a mental like impact. And so kind of diving deep into to Riley's kind of psyche and seeing what's going on and what that pressure is doing and how that ultimately affects her relationship with her mom, her relationship with her girlfriend and this new relationship with Coach Eileen. Yeah, and embodying Riley for you, like I can only imagine that was both physically and emotionally a bit of a challenge. Uh, do you want to talk about how you prepared for that? I mean, obviously on the physical side of things, there was a lot of preparation. It was about four months that I was doing personal training. I was going to physiotherapy. I was doing open gymnastics. I was doing open cheer um, just to make sure that I was like my body could handle uh, doing all of the strenuous stunts, especially with we, we filmed in 17 days. So all of our days, especially for a week straight, it was like like 12 hours of, of physical cheerleading. So I needed to make sure that I was ready for it and that like my old ass gymnast knees could handle the, handle the, the literal pressure. And then emotionally, I think this is like the film that I've had the most prep for ever because I've been a producer on it since its inception and, uh, and getting to be able to really develop the characters. And th there was a point though where I was like, okay, I gotta take off my, uh, my producer's hat and I have to put on my actor's hat and make sure that I'm like sinking into Riley's skin. And, and it was a little bit of a challenge because it's like, it's not, a character, it's not like, okay, this person is geeky or this person is this. And it's like Riley is so three dimensional and there's so many aspects to her, whether that's being like silly and stupid with her girlfriend who she loves so much, or it's her being really obsessive and competitive. There's like every end of the spectrum. And it's like, it's one of the roles that I'm most proud of in, in my career as an actor. 
As you, you should be. Like, it's a masterful performance. I was really blown away, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another thing that I loved about the movie, beyond your performance and, and everything you did, is just how incredibly queer it is, inside and out. Um, uh, Evan Rachel Wood, queer icon, um, yep. is in it. Uh, Elliot Page, produce, executive producer. Queer it. icon. Queer icon. Uh, also, <laughs> Trans Shannon icon. Shannon is also a queer icon. Shannon Sossaman is a queer icon, and uh, I remember mentioning that to her when, when we were working on set. I'm like, you know you're a queer icon, right? E even though I, I don't believe she's a part of the community, and she's like, yes, I have heard. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> We've heard so many people where they're like, Shannon Sossaman's in your movie. Oh my God, she was my queer awakening. And we're like, we know. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have a token straight person on set, I feel like Shannon Sossman she <laughs> she's the best one. is the best one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you want to talk about why it was important to you both to make it so inclusive? I mean, uh, truly, I'm just reflecting my world, yeah. you know? And I feel like with so many, I don't know, maybe studio films or people are trying to like, how do we get the gays to watch something? And it's like, we'll write this, we'll write that. And, and just like hire queer people, you yeah. know? And, and, and let us write our lived experience and like a lot of our, our producing team was queer, uh, a lot of our crew was queer, um, obviously the characters are queer and a lot of the actors are queer, like hire queer actors to portray queer people, like you're bringing a three-dimensional like person uh, who with lived experience into, into those performances. But for me, from a story perspective, I really just wanted, it's so easy in film to put the conflict on how hard it is to be queer yeah. or gay or the coming out process or the I'm dating someone but they're not out kind of thing and I was like let's take the conflict and put it in the sport yeah. because that's where there's conflict already and let's just let the characters be who they are like it's not yeah I didn't want the conflict to be there. And like, don't get me wrong, we love seeing queer relationships on screen and, and it was important for us to make sure that it was a positive queer relationship. It doesn't mean there's not conflict that happens within it, but they're able to overcome it between Riley and Amanda. And we were more interested in examining how queer folks relate to each other who aren't in a relationship romantically. Like the relationship between uh, Amanda and Riley as one, but the relationship between Riley and her coach Eileen and, and the friction that can happen sometimes between generations of queer folks. Getting to, to see these queer people relate to each other was, was really important and I don't know that we've seen that conversation very often. No, I mean, I feel like you can really feel it when it's, you know, authentically queer in a certain sense. And I, I really felt that with this film. Another thing I felt with this film was that it, it just seems to me like one of the only films I've ever even heard of that is about queer people playing sports. Um, mm -hmm. The only example I could really think of was Personal Best, that movie with Meryl Hemingway from the 80s. Which oh, was very oh, much written and directed by a, a straight person, but yeah. it's about like a lesbian track star. Yeah. Anyway, cool. what, what do you think the sort <laughs> oh, of resistance is to sort of making movies about queer sports or queer people playing sports. Like, why is that yeah. just doesn't exist? Like, uh, yeah, I have just sort of thoughts on that. I mean, when you think sport, you just, everybody's mind goes to like men, straight men, sports. Uh, and just to even get like women's sports in the conversation is yeah. such, you know, so much energy. And we're just kind of seeing that now with, you know, um, you know, WNBA and so on. But it's like queer conversations, you know, queer people in sport. The only time we hear of that is, again, the conflict, whose body can be in what, you know, change room, essentially, yeah. and who's allowed to compete where, and it's like, okay, but they're athletes. Like, let them just compete. And uh, yeah, I mean, to me, I didn't even think about it. It's just also cheerleading. You, you can't take 28 young women who are all going through puberty and put them in practices eight hours a day and be touring them around for competition and sharing hotel not, rooms. <laughs> yeah, and, sh and sharing hotel rooms and, you know, exploration not happen. Yeah. Like that's just, it's happening. Whether or not the cheer moms know about it is another question. Yeah, I mean, we're fully waiting for like cheer moms in the U.S. who are like conservative to come after us. I mean, yeah. they might. We're, 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 <laughs> I mean, they might. Well, but I mean, waiting. like, they're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, we play sports. Um, yeah. But I also love yeah. how, like, of all the sports, cheerleading, which is very sort of like a heteronormative sort of straight girl sport, that this sort of queered that in a very sort of, yeah, it wasn't about the queerness at all. It was mm -hmm. sort of about the sport, and I really appreciated that. Um, also, we mentioned this is your first film. I'm yes. just curious what, for you, you know, you've done a lot going into this, but as a first-time filmmaker, what were some of the biggest challenges for you? I mean, I think doing a sports film on an indie budget was, uh, we're like, yeah, we can totally do it. And, and then, you know, talking to my producer about a month out, we're like, wow, this is why other people don't do this. You know, it's challenging <laughs> and wrangling, wrangling a sports team for multiple scenes, you know. 
but yeah, I I was ready. Like I've been ready to do my debut feature for a long time and just like prepping and getting my shot list together and casting and, and that whole process, it, it was fantastic. I feel like day one on set, I was like a fish in water. I'm like, let's go, let's make a great film. That's great, I mean, that confidence shows on screen, so congratulations. And um, I couldn't help but think of But I'm a Cheerleader after watching this, even though the two films don't really have anything in common other than the fact that they're both very queer and they both star a cheerleader. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, that movie was like a really big deal for me, sort of coming out and growing up sort of as a teenager. I was just curious what some examples of, of queer films for both of you really stand out as films that sort of influence you, maybe creatively, but maybe just personally. Yeah, I feel like for me, which is not necessarily a queer film, but it's queer coded, uh, as Bennett like Beckham. I yeah. feel like when I saw that film as like a, a little teen, I was just like, wow. It like really did change something in me. And I remember going back to the DVD menu and hitting play again as soon as I finished it and taking notes on story and like, tried to figure out why this affected me so much. And I think since then there's like little things on the internet saying, you know, that was supposed to be a lesbian relationship but between, you know, but they're like a female sports movie and it's gay, it'll never work. And so they kind of like started to scratch that out in the script, but it's still the fabric of that storyline. You so, feel it. Yeah, you, you definitely feel it. So I feel like that was like a big, a big one for me. I have so many queer films that I want to like shout out and mention, but like I am a SAG member and a WGA member, Absolutely. and uh, in in the sake of wanting to make sure that I'm not promoting struck work, I don't know that I can list it for that you. That is right absolutely now. fair. <laughs> but I do, I would want to um, I do want to shout out, which is why I'm wearing this T-shirt today. Uh, Naya Rivera's performance in, in Glee and, and being such like that iconic performance uh, of Santana coming out and Santana and Britney like that was such an iconic relationship and, and seeing that in pop culture at the, at the forefront was a, a game changer for, for me. Yeah, and I actually was like looking up Ben like Beckham when I was thinking about sports mm -hmm. movies yeah. to actually double check that it wasn't explicitly queer and it's not, but it <laughs> yeah. feels like it was. It feels, feels queer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's so also queer. just like I was looking back to see like, you know, movies starring queer women or queer non-binary uh, people. Um, I just feel like there's so many, like all the examples recently, like they're always set in like the 1800s or 1900s. It's oh so nice God. to see like lately, <laughs> like this place, Bottoms, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. like there's a, a surge of new films that are yes. set in the present. Yeah, I'm that. like, if I see two women holding a hand on a cliff one more time, I'm just like, <laughs> I can. <laughs> thank you both so much for, for being here with me today. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Three, two, one.